Hey everyone, we are continuing. We, and by we, I mean me, I am continuing the Astro 101 series where we're going over some basics in astronomy just to just to refresher, just to like lock some stuff in uh, so that if I ever bring this stuff up again in a future video, I can say, hey, 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 I, I did a video on like celestial coordinates or, or the definition of a planet. Uh, and today I want to talk about the formation of the solar system. So we have a broad brush. Uh, we have a sketch of how the solar system formed. There are a lot of questions and a lot of details we don't understand, uh, but we generally come to an understanding of the formation of the solar system from a few different directions. One is we know uh, what the solar system is made of. We know what the sun is made of and the planets are made of. We uh, have very sophisticated computer models. Like we have the solar system that it is today billions of years after it formed. And there are only so many ways to get this result for our current solar system. So we can run computer models, physics simulations to try to guess of what uh, of what led to this current situation. Uh, and also we have the, uh, the, the orbits and properties of objects in the solar system, uh, where we study this, not through computer simulation, but just from, from understanding like, okay, if we have giant planets out here and rocky planets in here, uh, and we have a uh, huge hydrogen and helium envelopes of gas out here, but not in here, uh, this tells us something about how these two different kinds of planets formed, for example. Uh, the model, the most favored, the consensus model or the sketch of how the solar system formed is called the Nice model uh, because it was kicked off at a conference in Nice, France. Again, astronomers are really, really good at picking conference locations. Uh, and it was at this conference where a bunch of astronomers and planetary scientists like generated a model together of, of how the solar system formed. And, and it goes like this. Uh, in the beginning, there was a nebula. There was this big cloud of gas and dust. We suspect that a nearby supernova went off. Uh, flooded our nebula and started to trigger some gravitational collapse. Uh, we have evidence of this because there are some radioactive elements that are still present in the solar system that can only come from a supernova. So this helps date it. And also like there had to be something like right at the beginning in order to have this many of uh, certain kinds of radioactive elements. The nebula contracted and collapsed and formed in a uh, disk around a star that would eventually become the sun. In the inner parts of the solar system, uh, uh, like in this disk, there's hydrogen, helium, and a bunch of other stuff like, like water and silicon and all that. In the inner parts of the solar system, it got too hot. Uh, the sun the, or the proto sun was giving off too much heat and it drove away all the hydrogen and helium. And you're left with little pebbles that stick together and then slowly group onto each other and become what we call planetesimals. And you have a lot of planetesimals that start crashing into each other and slowly assemble the four inner planets. In fact, Earth, we suspect, was hit by a Mars-sized planet uh, that we call Thea. And when it collided, that's what generated the moon and gave us an extra boost in mass. In the outer part of the solar system, it's cold enough where the hydrogen and helium could stick around and where the uh, where ices could form in addition to the rocks. So inner solar system, you just have rocks. Outer solar system, you have rocks and ices. So they're able to build up cores much, much faster. And then with all that massive gravity, these giant plants are able to suck down huge gaseous envelopes like hydrogen and helium and ammonia and all sorts of cool stuff. And so that's how we think the four giant planets formed. And, uh, but we don't think they formed in their present position. We actually think they formed uh, closer together and farther out. And then slowly over time, the planets migrated. In fact, there may have even been a fifth, the giant planet that got kicked out of the solar system during this process. We don't know exactly how this migration process occurred, but we suspect it happened because of the distribution of asteroids of their orbits in the inner solar system, a Kuiper belt objects in the outer solar system, like 
they're very, very subtle tweaks and clumpings and groups in those orbits. And those can only happen when you have a giant planet moving around in a solar system. That's how you can tweak those orbits. So we think uh, Jupiter moved in, uh, Saturn followed, Uranus and Neptune probably spread out, got further away. Uh, this action of the giant planets moving around uh, pushed any remaining material that didn't go into planet formation into a ring surrounding us into the Kuiper belt, uh, out into the Oort cloud. Uh, the asteroid belt is at a place where, uh, a very unlucky place where you would love to have a planet, uh, but you can't because of the gravity of Jupiter. Every time the asteroids would try to come together to form a planet there, the gravity of Jupiter would rip them apart. So hence we have a belt of asteroids. And then we have a belt of remaining material in, in the Kuiper belt outside the orbit of Neptune. Again, we don't know a lot of the details. We don't know how that giant planet migration exactly played out. Uh, there's one scenario even where Jupiter comes swinging in almost to the orbit of Mars and then comes back out. There's the scenario that I mentioned where a fifth planet gets kicked out and that's what sets the migration phase. Uh, there's a scenario where Jupiter and Saturn come in together. There's a scenario where like Jupiter comes in, then Saturn follows and they, they go like this, like inchworming across. It's like all sorts of cool scenarios. Uh, we don't have enough data yet, uh, no, enough knowledge of the orbits of asteroids and Trojans and Kuiper Belt objects to, to solidify our understanding, but that's the broad sketch. Uh, and then comets brought a bunch of water to the inner planets, Earth gets wet, has life, yay. There's, there's a few billion years that I'm skipping. Hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. And don't forget to go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to keep this show going. And uh, yeah, like, share, and subscribe. Do all that stuff. And yay, solar system.